I am at the iconic Sharjah Cricket Stadium. And joining me right now is the man who has taken care of this stadium, who has nurtured this stadium, and who, is, who has made a promise to everyone that he is going to take this stadium as far as he can in terms of the quality that cricket in Dubai is in UAE is uh, is played at. Uh, sir, thank you very much for uh, talking to us at NDTV. First of all, uh, just give us a sense of uh, what this place means because it has a lot of associated memories, a lot of memories uh, for the fans, for you personally and uh, for the players. Well, I think, uh, you know, thank you very much for taking me on. Uh, it all started way back in the 19, early 80s when uh, Mr. Bukhater, who owns this place, he, uh, he had a vision to invite cricketers and teams from Asian countries and play here. So I think it all started in 1984 as an Asia Cup, but before that, we were playing some friendly fixtures. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the stadium itself has gradually grown. I mean, what you see today, we, there were scarf holdings all around. There was hardly anything to set, but a small little uh, a pavilion for, uh, for the players. And uh, today we are indeed proud that, you know, we have posted uh, 245 ODIs uh, maximum in the world and hold the Guinness Book of World Record. Yeah, absolutely. It, 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 this place is like, uh, uh, it's, it's like a landmark when you talk of it in terms of cricket. And uh, it has seen a lot of special moments. The desert storm, the, the most famous desert storm, it happened here. Uh, what are your memories of that? Just to give us a sense of... Because you, uh, I believe, have experienced it live. You've seen it happening right in front of your eyes. What was that moment like? And how did it change uh, cricket, not just not just in India or uh, for the people of India and Australia, but also the people of UAE? Well, I think, uh, you know, uh, that inning, it, it is such a memorable inning that, you know, uh, uh, th there was some reason that there was a sandstorm rather than the desert storm before the desert uh, uh, desert storm and uh, the sandstorm stopped the match and uh, the players had to come in because everyone was struggling to avoid uh, you know sand going into their eyes and uh, after some time after 20 minutes everything cleared and I think we were playing Australia and uh, uh, we had to qualify to go into the finals and I remember uh, when Sachin came out and he was a different Sachin altogether uh, every shot he played was just out of the books. Uh, he was hitting uh, the best of players uh, like you know nobody's business. Wherever he wanted to place the ball, be it the cover drive, be it the mid wicket, or a six or a four, anywhere he wanted to hit the ball. There is another very iconic match and uh, a very iconic moment uh, that happened in this very stadium. Uh, the last ball six. Uh, that uh, Javed Nianda, the hit of uh, Chetan Sharma. What was the atmosphere like? Because for me, who has, who, has not, you know, who has not witnessed it live, we have only read about it. I personally only read about it, watched the highlights. You have seen it happening in front of your eyes. What was it like? Yeah, I think uh, India scored about 247 runs uh, with uh, Gavaskar getting 290 odd runs and Peng Sarkar getting some runs. And uh, at uh, halfway mark, I think as an Indian, we were all comfortable that, you know, we are going to go through. Uh, never imagined that uh, that inning of Javed will uh, ultimately take them past that score. Because 250 was a very good run, uh, number, very, very good score in those days as a ODI uh, score. But uh, the way he accumulated runs, the way he ran, the way he uh, had partnerships, a little lucky here and there, I would say. But, you know, he made it. The last ball. Uh, it was. Uh, I think. What were your thoughts? Did you well, think? Did you think Pakistan would win that match? Not really. You know, who could have imagined in those days a six will just come through like that? You know, because all of the fielders were on the boundary line, and you know, uh, uh, there was a lot of discussions on changing the field and uh, Kapil going to Chetan and you know, uh, telling him what to do, what not to do. But unfortunately, I think he tried to pull a Yorker which uh, uh, went over, you know, as a full toss. Yeah. And he just hit it over those uh, mid-wicket area for a, for a six, and that was it. Uh, that was the exciting 
moment for Sharjah to start off with. And then, then after 12 years or 14 years, Sachin came up with this yeah. uh, thunderstorm inning, which was uh, another remarkable uh, thing, which we will always remember for many years to come. I think, yeah. I think uh, the, the entire story, um, it all began a little, be, a little back, a little back in 1984. Um, in a very famous match uh, that uh, Pakistan got out for 100 and, uh, sorry India got out for 125 this was the Rothmans uh, Cup match right. and uh, India managed to bowl out uh, the Pakistanis for 80 odd runs uh, I think that is where that rivalry especially in this place uh, yeah that uh, we, we I mean we as Indians I think we were pretty disappointed that India just scored 125 because in that match I think Imran Khan got us six for 14 or something like that but then you know it was uh, the way uh, the indians came back uh, pakistan were just 44 one or two cruising and just to get another 80 runs but uh, uh, sivarama krishnan and uh, ravi shastri and you know uh, whoever came into bowl and i remember sunil by picking up uh, four or five catches uh, at slip just yeah. imagine a slip and Sunil, the, Sunil Bhai as in Sunil Gavaskar. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's that's another remarkable game of cricket, I think, which uh, uh, that's how the interest amongst the Asians grew, uh, not only in this part of the world but across the world. I think those matches are, uh, you know, uh, are needs to be cherished for many years for uh, both the Indians and Pakistanis. Uh, 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 such a wonderful cricketers we had, and uh, uh, we are indeed proud you know, being. Guinea's Book of World Record holder. Yeah. Uh, you surpass Sid Sydney as. Uh, uh, no, as we, we, we are ahead of Sydney. I think Sydney is 180 or something like that. We are 245. Matches. And we are looking forward to do uh, 250 mark, uh, inshallah. So let's hope uh, you know we reach that also. So all credit should go to the management, Mr. Bukhater and his family here, who have taken cricket uh, to a different level. Uh, and you have seen the quality of cricket the boys are playing here. Uh, the UAE boys yeah. and I also wanted to talk about uh, talk about the league and uh, which is happening right now the DP World T uh, ILT20 league and uh, give us a sense of uh, uh, the quality that you have seen in this very league despite the fact uh, that a lot of Indian players uh, a lot of Pakistani players are not a part of uh, this league yet you have uh, uh, players coming from England and West Indies and other nations being a part of this do you think uh, the quality is there in that league at the moment or do you also feel that had they been the Indians and the Pakistani a part of uh, uh, the league here in Dubai it would have added a lot more well, viewership uh, and interest in the league uh, in India uh, any Indian player participating makes a lot of difference and uh, it's just the beginning I suppose this is the first year and uh, the quality of cricket uh, I think is as good as anywhere in the world uh, you see nine international players playing uh, with the two UAE players yeah. and uh, some amazing uh, bowling, batting and fielding uh, what we have seen so far and I'm sure this league is going to grow with the passage of time and uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity for the Afghani players also to come and perform in this league and uh, a lot of West Indians are there, South Africans are uh, South Africans I'm not sure but uh, English, players English, players. Are, English players are quite a lot of yeah. them are there the Sri Lankans are very much there, so I think it's it's an international league, uh, rightly uh, called, and uh, so we do hope to you know uh, uh, grow and uh, be amongst the top leagues of the world. We hope so. Yeah. We hope that uh, the league grows uh, as much as it can and uh, is considered as uh, one of the top leagues uh, yeah. of the world. With just one uh, quick last question from you. Um, we have talked about the history of uh, this iconic stadium. We have talked about the history of cricket in this uh, in this region. Um, what do you think uh, the future holds uh, for cricket in UAE and especially uh, this very stadium, the Sharjah Cricket Stadium? I think uh, you know this UAE is such a wonderful hub. Today, any team going from Australia to England, they stop over here and practice. From England to Australia, they stop over here to practice. So there's so many facilities here for international cricketers who are playing bilateral series or any anything of that sort. Plus the way we have conducted ourselves while hosting the two IPLs because of yeah. COVID yeah. and the World Cup because of yeah. COVID. Yeah. I think full marks to UAE for, for being 
uh, putting their hands together to host it in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and Sharjah. They say they say that uh, Melbourne is uh, uh, the sports capital of the world. Uh, do you feel that Dubai is uh, catching up very very quickly and becoming the sports capital of the world? Well, Melbourne is Melbourne. <laughs> but then again, we are not far behind, I suppose, because the international exposure, the facilities, the infrastructure available here is, uh, you know, uh, uh, you cannot beat that. Absolutely. Sure. Mazaruddin Saab, thank, thank you very, very much, much for talking thank to NDTV. It's been a pleasure. pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Sir.